This is a beginner's 4x4 Rubik's Cube tutorial. If you aren't already familiar with solving a 3x3 Rubik's Cube, I recommend you learning that first, as this method builds on some of those concepts. In this tutorial, we'll go step by step, which includes solving the centers, pairing the edges, and solving a cube like a 3x3. Along the way, I'll show you how to handle parity cases, such as this, and this. These cases are impossible on a 3x3, which are unique to a 4x4. The first step is to solve all of the centers. To make learning easier, we're going to stick to a specific order. So the first center we're going to solve is the white center. To make a center, the easiest way is to make two pairs of two center pieces. To make a pair of centers, you need to first align two white center pieces and then join them. Now, if I bring this up, these do not connect because they're not aligned. So before doing that move, I want to do another move to make them align with each other. For example, this move. This move makes it that if I do this move, these two will be joined together. And this is a pair we've made. After making one pair, we're going to make another pair. We're going to find the remaining two white center pieces, which is this piece and this piece. And we need to make sure that the moves we do do not ruin this pair. So while making the second pair, we're going to have to preserve the first pair. For example, in this case, none of these moves and none of these moves or these moves or these moves will destroy this pair. So I can make them align with each other like this and then use this move to join them together. And then finally, I will join the two pairs with each other. And now we've made our first center. Here's a different case after we build our first pair. The remaining pieces are here and here, and the pair is here. By aligning them and joining them, the move that you use to join them, which is this move, will ruin this pair. So before doing that, you need to move this pair out of the way so that this move does not destroy this pair. And now we can align them. After making the white center, we're going to make the yellow center opposite of the white center. And the concept is really similar. So firstly, we're going to find two yellow center pieces, which are this piece and this piece in this case. And uh, similarly, we're going to align them and then use one move to join them. And then we're going to insert this pair of yellow centers onto the top face if you're holding white on the bottom. This is because if you're looking at a 3 by 3 Rubik's Cube, you can see that white is always opposite of yellow. To enter this pair onto the top face, you want to first bring this pair up and then move this out of the way by doing a 180 degree turn and then restore this white center. And now this pair is on the top. And now we're going to make the next pair of yellow centers. I see the centerpiece and this centerpiece. And again, we're going to align them, join them. And before trying to insert it, you need to align them like this so that they're right on top of each other and then you need to move this yellow center up move this out of the way move it back down and now the yellow center is also solved here's another special case three of the yellow centers are already solved and there's only one left and you can't really pair this up with any other pieces because all of the pieces are on the top obviously here we need to do is you need to align this to two of the yellow pieces on top so that this piece aligns with this piece. So now we're going to do the same thing. So join them and then move it out of the way and then repair the white center. And now we have the pair and then we can just insert it. After solving the first two centers, we're going to move on to the rest of the centers. If you look at it throughout the Rubik's Cube again, you can see that if you're putting white on the left side and yellow on the right side, the order from bottom to top is green, red, blue, and orange. So you have to solve the 4x4 centers in this specific order. Again, to make learning easier, we're going to solve these centers in a fixed order. So first, we're going to solve the green center. And similarly to the first two centers, you're going to solve a pair another pair and then join them. So now we already have a pair 
you can treat this as a pair or this as a pair, it doesn't really matter. And now you want to pair the other piece to the remaining piece. So first you want to align them like this. So now if you bring this up here, now they form a pair. And then now you just join them. According to the order, after solving the green center, on top of green, we're going to solve the red center. The method is really similar. Make a pair, make another pair, and then connect them. So first, I say this and this. I need to use one move to make them align with each other. And use another move to pair them up. By doing this move, I've messed up the green center. I will move this out of the way and then repair the green center. Now we're going to look for the remaining red center pieces, which are this piece and this piece. This is a really interesting case because these two are on the same face, but they're not connected. So here what we can do is to bring one of them up and then use one move to move this so that when you move the spec down, they get connected. And to solve this pair to here, because uh, according to the order, red must be here. You can bring this empty slot, just like ignore this pair because we're solving red and we can just treat this as an empty slot. And then you can bring this up, replace the empty slot with the red pair, bring it back down. And now you have the red center also solved. And lastly, by solving either of these two centers, the other one will become automatically solved. On top of red, you will have to solve the blue center. There's only a few cases, so I might as well just go through all of them. So the first case is when this face is supposed to be blue, and there's three blue pieces. There must be only one blue piece here, because there's only one missing. You see how this is on the bottom right, so we're going to put this on the top left, so they're diagonal of each other. And now we're going to move this slice up, and then move this to the right side. So when you move this back down, uh, the center gets solved. The next case is when this face is supposed to be blue and there's only one blue piece and this face is supposed to be orange but it only has one orange piece. So here you're going to do a similar thing, make them diagonal and then you're going to match this blue to this blue, move the blue to the side, move it back down. So now you can insert this blue into here by bringing this up, moving it into the slot bringing it back down. If both of these centers are fully solved, except they're in the wrong order, such as this is supposed to be blue, but it's filled by orange, and this is supposed to be orange, but it's filled by blue. So now what you do is to do the inserting into slot thing again. So now you want to bring this slot up, bring this blue pair here, bring it back down, and now we have that case again. So you're going to bring this slot up, bring this here, and bring it back down. The next case is what people like to call the checkable pattern. So we have two blues diagonal here and two blues diagonal here, or it can be this, it doesn't really matter. So first you want to make it so that one of them align with each other. So here, if I move this up, these two will align, or if I move this up, these two will align. And I can't just do this because if I move this up or move this up, nothing aligns. So what you want to do here is to make it so that they do align and then bring this back down. This gets simplified to the first case I explained. And here's the last case. We have a blue pair solved right here and then we have two blues diagonal up here. So what we want to do is to bring this piece up so that we can move this freely and bring it back down so that they pair with each other. And now we have the two pair cases again. We can bring the slot up, replace it with the pair, bring it back down. And now all of the centers are solved. After solving the centers, we're going to move on to pairing the edges. So firstly, we're going to look at an edge piece. So we have white red here. And we're going to look for the other edge piece that's also white red. So we're going to look for it. It's right here. And we want to bring them close to each other. And make them so that they align with each other if one goes up to the other one. Now we want to connect them. So now since this pair is solved, we want to replace this pair with an unsolved pair. To do this, you want to move this to the side, replace it with a pair that's not solved, move it back, and then move it back up. And now this pair is paired up. Here's another example. So we have white orange and white orange. And to pair them, 
uh, you can't have them like this because you can't really join them with any move here. So what you can do is to move this to the side and then bring it below here so that they do join together. And then you can just join them, replace it, and then unjoin. You can continue doing this until one or two things happen. So the first thing that could happen is, well, all of the edges are paired up, which is good. And the other thing is this. So we have white, blue, white, blue, but we also have green, red, green, red. And there's no other unsolved pairs because all of them are paired up and these two are the only ones left. If you try to do the same thing again, such as connecting these two, you can see that there's no unsolved pairs that you can replace this with. So to solve this, you want to first make them not match with each other. So this is, like normally, this, this is what you want, but if there's only two edges remaining, you want to do the opposite. So you want to make this, like, not match with this. So you can do this by moving it up and then inserting it in a different way. So now you can't connect these two or these two with a single move. And to solve this, uh, you need to do what cubers like to call a slice flip slice. So, so you want to hold them sideways. You want to push one of them into the other one. And then take this out like this. And then bring this back down in a different way, such as this. and then undo the slice move. And now this cube is a 3x3. Three three. Sometimes you might encounter these parity cases. This isn't all or parity, which means there's an odd number of edges that are flipped. So for example, this edge is supposed to be flipped, and this case is impossible on a 3x3. Three three. So what you want to do is the algorithm up here. And this might seem really long, but to make this algorithm easier to learn, you just gotta remember that all of the U moves are U2s, and all of the other moves are either R wide or L wide moves, and there's no other moves. So the algorithm goes like this. And finally, you might also encounter these cases. So we have this and this swapped, which is impossible on a 3x3, three three, and there's no flipped edges. And this is called a PLR parity. And this algorithm is way easier to learn. I will write them up on the screen, and it goes like this. And now the cube becomes solvable. Here's a full explained walkthrough solve. So this scramble has um, one white pair already solved, so that's good. I just have to pair up the other one. So the remaining white center pieces are this piece and this piece. So I'm gonna make them align with each other, such as this and this, and I can move it down so that they join. And then I can just join these two to solve the white center. And now we have three yellow pieces on top and one on the bottom. So we can do the thing I said, which is aligning this to these two, and then make sure that this also aligns with this. So I can bring this down. And then since when I was joining this pair, the white got messed up, I need to move this out of the way, and then repair white. Now the yellow center is also solved. And now we're gonna move on to green. So I see this pair already solved. So I'm going to move this to the side. And now I'm going to look for the remaining green center pieces, which are this piece and this piece. And I want to make them align with each other, such as this, join them, and then join this pair with this pair. And now we want red on this face because the fixed order. So we have a pair already solved here. So we can use the slotting method. So we can bring the slot up, replace the slot with the red pieces, bring it back down. And now this pair is on the face it's supposed to be on. 
and the remaining red pieces are this and this. So we're going to make them align with each other, join them, move it out of the way, repair, and then we're going to move this out of the way so that we can bring this slot up, bring it onto the slot, bring it back down, and now the red is also solved. So lastly, we're going to solve blue and orange centers here. So we have this case where it's a checkerboard on the bottom and there's a pair on the top. So we can insert this pair like this, bringing the slot up and then replacing this with this pair, bring it back down. And now this simplifies it into the um, diagonal case where I can make them diagonal with each other. And then I can bring this up. And since this pair is made, I can put it on the side and then bring it back down. And now all of the centers are solved in the correct order. So now we're going to do edge pairing. So I see white, blue and white, blue. So here, if I insert it like this, it's incorrect. So I'm going to move this off to the side and then look for a different way to make them align, such as this. Now I can pair them up, replace them with this, move it back down. And then I'll just repeat the same step for the remaining of the edge pieces. This and this. And uh, this and this. This doesn't pair up, so I'm going to move this off to the side, to the bottom. Now they pair up. This and this, so they pair up, and then there's nothing on the right, so I can just replace it with something on the left side. And now this is solved. Here we have this and this, same problem, they're not paired up, so I'm going to move this off to the side, and then replace it. And then what do I see? I see this and this. Join, replace, undo. Oh yeah, here's a um another special case I forgot to mention. So by pairing this up, there's nothing on the side. You might want to undo to check if there's um, a third pair that's not paired up, such as this. So you want to move this out of the layer so that it's not parallel to these two. And then you, you can just pair up, insert, undo. And now all of the pieces are solved. And now you can just solve this as a 3x3. Three three. So I'm going to use CFOP here. Don't mind my CVOP skills, I don't use it. <laughs> and now we have all our parity, so I'm gonna do the algorithm. And then PLR. Oh, this is PLR parity. And then finally, solve the cube. 